All right, guys, before I get into the TA, I would like to point out um, if you use Coinbase or Gemini, they're located in the U.S., and by law, they have to, uh, if you if you make over a certain amount or you've transacted over a certain amount, by the law, they have to send a 1099 to the, to the IRS, and they'll also send one to you. The reason I bring this up, um, if, if you're on Coinbase, I don't think it matters, but if you're on Coinbase Pro, and for instance, if you're in Arkansas, uh, District of Columbia, Massachusetts, Mississippi, New Jersey, Vermont. If you if you meet any of these um, of these amounts here or more, and if, if you're in another state other than these, it's uh, twenty thousand dollars or greater. But guys, if you do meet this threshold, you will be sent a ten ninety nine, and you know it's possible you could have sent money out to other exchanges to do leverage trading. Um, and you might have losses again guys if you do have losses you can write that off and the reason I bring this up again guys this is um, this crypto trader tax again the affiliate links in the description um, if you click that link you will save 10% it's free to sign up I think if you want to get reports you have to pay for it they have different options uh, but basically it's pretty simple you know you add your exchange um, you know and let's say you, you add coinbase pro other ones that you've um, you've uh, traded on, and let's just say that you did leverage trading on another exchange and you lost money um, when you import your trades. You know you'll connect to all of these different exchanges, and then um, there's also other transactions. So let's say you sent some Bitcoin to the wrong to the, a wrong address and they got lost, or something got some of your Bitcoin got stolen. You can also add that as a loss. And then you can review your transactions, and then also you can go into create report. This is where it will show you how much your gains and your losses were for um, a certain year for the tax season. And, and again, so if, if you had losses, you could actually you know, write that off. And I only say this because, guys, if, if, if you're in the U.S. and you do meet that threshold, like again, you will get a 1099, and at least this puts you ahead of the game. So if you do get that and they say, hey, we well, owe this much, and you can say, oh, yeah, well, you know, I lost this much. So, And again, they do have support. They have live live support um, you can get on here and talk to people and ask questions so guys check that out just play it safe and, you know th the very least even if you don't pay your taxes or if you don't get 1099 at least you know how much you might owe or at least how much you can write off so I do suggest checking that out at least use a free sign up and if you do want to save 10% check out that affiliate link so to recap uh, before we get to the TA so on February 4th I um, I made a, a, a tweet where I was expecting when we cross a certain ring we get a pump. Uh, that is this video here. I'll put a link up to that if you want to watch it. Uh, also, I did a or I made a tweet on it was February sixth, and it was about the video. Um, I said, "Remember, white rising wedge. I expect a, a breakout or a fake out to the upside, and then we become, we come crashing down." Guys, that's this video. Uh, I'll put a link up to that video if you want to watch it. Again, all these videos I reference will be in the description as well. So this video here, um, this is the chart that I was referencing. Let me show you this. So in that in that that video, if you watch it, I did have some um, some indicators. I showed I showed three indicators why I thought this was likely. Um, also, just because it seemed like the perfect setup just to trick people. But I said it between the 9th and the 11th, we'd have a push up. You can see. Um, this is the ninth. We had this. This was a rising wedge we're in, and I said on the ninth we would push up between the ninth and eleventh. You can see we pushed up, and I said we get topped out at the point five, which is around ten thousand one hundred sixty-four dollars. I said we wouldn't make it above that point. I also told. Uh, I also made a tweet. I said always create a trend line because if you have this trend line, you can see prices falling in this tra this trajectory. Even though it pushed up, this trend line is still in place. You can see when we hit this trend line again, we had one more pump. And then we came down, we found support on it, and as soon as we broke that trend line, we dropped down. Guys, I cover this in my tutorials. That's the very first tutorial I made. It's the first thing I really you know, delve into because that's if, if you understand how trend lines work, it really can help you find support and resistance levels, not to mention points where price might break and you could get a drop or a pump. But guys, this played out to the T. <laughs> it's, it's crazy how accurately this, this played out. I mean, we got the pump on the 9th, we got stopped out, um, you know, topped out at the 0.5, and then we fall right back through. And that's pretty much what I predicted, and it played out to the T. Um, again, um, I'm, I'm going to go over some of the charts and show you what I see playing out and what I expect, how I expect uh, it to play out. But I would like to show you that this right here. Um, you can see we're currently finding support on this, um, and there's there's different there's three different Fibonacci retracements here. 
Let me go to the one day so we can find out which is which. So this, the, the one we're currently finding support on, this Fib retracement right here, it comes from the bottom. Let's see here. Let me just get rid of this bottom part. So this Fib retracement right here just comes from the bottom up to the top. And you can see that is currently where we're finding support. And that is the um, 0.382. Go back to the uh, two hour here, and that that's where we're currently finding support right now. Let me just double check that. Yeah, that's the point three eight two right here. So if we do have a drop down, guys, all of these fib channels are in play. You can see how well price is respecting these. Um, I'm sorry, the the lines in this fib retracement. So if we drop down below this, um, your next target, you know, according to this chart. By the way, guys, I added this chart to the um, website. It's let's see here. It's this chart right here, Bitcoin rising wedge, and also I added the Bitcoin bubble chart. Well, I'm, we'll go into that in just a bit. But guys, if we do drop down, your next target is going to be around 9,443 before we catch a bounce. Your next target below that is 9,266. And uh, you'll definitely be catching a bounce down here around 8,500. Not to mention that's you know that's an even psychological number. So that expect a pretty good bounce when we hit that. I do expect this to kind of go sideways and down if we continue to drop. Again, guys, that's this chart. Um, so I would like to go over and show you how some of these... Uh, um, charts that I made. By the way, guys, I am updating the charts. Uh, I just I've had some projects come up and some other things. I am working on them. That's why it's still twenty dollars to um, get access to the charts. Again, guys, if you if you do access the charts, it's only um, twenty dollars a month. Once the new charts are up, it will be forty dollars a month. If you're already paying twenty dollars a month, that won't change. But if you cancel the subscription, and try to renew, it will be forty dollars a month. Um, all of the charts have been updated, but again, it's just easier for me just to go in and just create all new charts. I am in the process of doing that. Um, all the charts will be up soon. I will let you guys know when that's up. But I want to show you how some of these played out. Um, and there is one chart in particular. So you can see this chart here. Um, you can see this white ring right here, which is it's kind of crazy. As soon as we hit this ring, we're finding support and resistance on it. We were moving down it. As soon as we crossed it, you can see we had a pivot and moved sideways. And you can see right now, this, this line right here, we were finding support and resistance on. Right now, we're finding resistance underneath this line. And again, I'm just showing you what's, what's playing out in these charts, so I can kind of give you an idea of what I expect to play out. Uh, you can see that this line right here has been a lot of support and resistance. You can see we came down and found perfect support. And, you know, we're finding resistance under this currently. Um, this is just one chart. Uh, you can see this chart right here. Um, you can see this is, you know, as soon as we broke, let me go down to the one hour. You can see as we came down, we found support, we came back up. As soon as we broke this line, and this line has been a lot of support and resistance going back. Again, guys, it's kind of interesting watching, because uh, I have charts for Bitcoin on multiple exchanges. So it's kind of interesting when you see how how price is uh, playing out. Sorry about that, guys. How price is playing out on multiple exchanges, and and seeing where the support levels are and how the price, you know, it's kind of like the same formation, but you know, it'll be a bit, it'll be following kind of a different trajectory in one exchange versus the other. That's why you know when you have multiple exchanges and you can see how they have play out, you can kind of get a better idea where price is going. But you can see that this right here, um, this was a lot of support and resistance. You can see we found support, support, um, support, resistance, a lot of support. We came down to this one, and then we moved back up. As soon as we broke this one, which was also support and resistance, as soon as we broke that, we came down to this one. And you can see this also showed, um, you know, this was resistance right back here. And again, you know, this isn't an angle, but as you can see clearly, where this was resistance, this now became support. And right now we're moving up this. And we are finding resistance right now on this line here in this FIB channel. So it's possible by the time I upload this video, we could potentially have a drop or a pump. And usually how these FIB channels work is, you know, depending on what, what formation you're coming out of, but, you know, your next target down on this FIB channel, again, you are respecting the rings, but just the FIB channel alone, your target is 9,727. If you push up, you can see how it's respecting every single one of these FIB channels. So if it pushes up, potentially it would hit. 9,938. Guys, I do um, think it's a lot more bearish than people think. Um, I'm just going to go through some of these charts. I'm going to show you the 
the chart that's most important where I expect a, a potential major move to happen. I'll show you that after I go through these. Um, this is a chart I made a post on my Twitter account. By the way, guys, um, if you want to uh, follow me on Twitter, my Twitter link is in the um, description. I'll also pin in the first comment. Guys, if I don't have time to make a video, I'll make a post there because it's, um, it's fast and it's easy. I would like to point out, um, you know, in, in that one video, you know, I, I said when we broke past a certain ring, you know, we have a pump. You know, we've been coming up ever since. But it's interesting that you see how we were finding resistance underneath this ring right here? We found resistance, found support, found support, found resistance. As soon as we pushed up, we came up, and look where you got topped out. This is the next ring up. So, you know, it looks like we're riding up this this uh, line right here. As soon as we break this support, you know, right here, as soon as we break this, you know, I expect us to start having another drop. And you see this line has played a role of support and resistance going way back. So, again, it, it looks like our resistance is this ring, and this is our support. I don't see us going up above this. I, I do think that, you know, we just started our downtrend. I think this is the highest point. You know, I didn't see us making a higher high. You know, if, if I go to the um, three hour here, you know, we didn't make a higher high. You know, I, I told you guys, and if you watch that video, there was a lot of support and resistance here, and I didn't see us getting above that. And that's why I said we'd be topped out at that fib, fib retracement number. And I use those other um, indicators as well. I use longs and as well as how much we were above um, the 200 moving average. But this was our high back here at 10,560. I don't see us getting back above this. I think a lot of people are going to think this is normal retracement. And then we'll start pushing back up. Guys, if we do push back up above this again, you know, I'd, I'd go a little bit more bullish. I don't think that's going to happen. Again, anything can happen. So, you know, we'll have to just wait and see. But. You know, I do want to show you one more chart before the chart that shows where potential moves can happen. This is another chart. This is the uh, Coinbase chart. You can see this um, this line right here has been a lot of support and resistance. So again, this goes along with that other chart. You know, this this right here is where we got topped out. So this is your support. This is your resistance before the next move. We break past this line, we're coming down. But guys, the chart that I want you to pay attention to, if you have access to the charts, guys, uh, pay attention to this chart. This is the Binance chart. Um, you can see that when we hit this ring, and, and this is what is important. I want to show you how well price is respected, this FIP circle here. And you can see right here, um, you know, we came down, we came up, we found resistance. You can see we hit this ring, we found support and resistance. We dropped down, perfect support. We came back up. You can see we came down as perfect support on it, more support, support and resistance. Then we moved back up, we found more resistance, and you can see as soon as we hit this ring out here, you know, this we move, we we got topped out here. We moved sideways, we hit this ring. So I expect. And you can see this this line right here has been giving us um, support and resistance right here. And you can see this line right here is currently giving us uh, resistance. We're moving above it a bit, but it's, it seems like we're pretty much staying underneath this, this line right here. But guys, I expect that when we hit this ring, now it's possible we could hit this ring and could push this up. It just seems more likely that um, you know since we hit this ring here, it pushed us down. That we'll continue to hit this ring and get pushed down until finally we cross this ring and then we'll push up. And that goes along with that. Um, let me find that actual. So this is, and sorry guys, I didn't plan this out too well. So this is that. Um, this is the actual published version of the chart. I published this on January 22nd. Um, and I made posts about you know this ring. I said that when we broke above this blue ring, you know, when we, if we get above this blue ring, expect us to pump. You see, that's what happened. This here is the ring. I said as soon as we cross this ring, expect us to pump. And you can see that's what happened ever since we crossed this ring. You know, and I referenced that video as well. We pushed up ever since. And take note, we hit this this ring right up here to the tick twice. We hit it once, twice. So. That's what I'm talking about. As soon as you move down a ring, and you're moving down it so well, as soon as you cross it, and you're at support. I had another chart I was using as reference that showed me there was very strong support here. We were moving down this ring perfectly. That's what told me that we would have a pump when we crossed it. 
and that's what I'm saying um, with this chart right here you know if we continue to push down this if we continue to hit this ring it'll continue to push us down once we cross the ring we can have a pump but guys I do not seeing us going higher I just I think that this is you know I made a video called the uh, Bitcoin bubble guys I still think that's in play um, I expect this to go much lower I uh, would like to show you so uh, that chart let me show you uh, so this let me go to this chart here so this is one added to the website uh, it's called the Bitcoin bubble and, and all I want to show you here is you know to me this is overwhelming <laughs> I mean I, I believe that this is how it's playing out uh, I mean I found, I found so many similarities in our current bear market compared to our previous bear market and if you want to watch that video, I'll put a link up to this now. It's also in the description. But guys, I think we're coming down a lot more. Uh, I think we're actually putting a lower low than, than 3,000. And if you watch that video, I explain why I believe that, that this is playing out exactly like this is and why we still have you know pretty much all of this to come down. You know, I go into detail in the entire video, but I would like to show you one more thing that I found that's, you know, to me is even more proof. You know, if you measure, uh, if we go from this point to where we pushed up, um, that's roughly 184 days. And if you come over here and you measure from our peak to where we pushed up, that is 557. So 557 uh, divided by 184. That gives you a factor of three. So, if if you look at it this way, um, what's taking place here? Everything here is 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 three times as long, and I imagine that the gain, you know, the the amount we pump would be three times as much. So if, if we come here and we measure this, so you know, th at this point, you know, we peaked here. You know, this would be equivalent to where we capitulated in in our current bear market from 6k to 3k. So if we measure the entire length, you know, if we come from the peak, you know, to this point where we, um, you know, our, our last point where we capitulated down, that's 257 days. So if we do that times three, um, 257 times three, that gives you 771 days. So let's measure this. I mean that that right there is 771 days, which is pretty close. And you know, I'm telling you, you know, I expected us to drop after this ring. We got to push up. I think this is complete manipulation. This was well, this is a sucker's pump, just to push it up to milk uh, milk retail and to get longs to go up before coming down. So I do believe that this this was the highest point, and we'll be coming down at this point. But just going by this, a factor of three. That means we are due to come down if this is playing out just like this. And just another example, um, and again, this was a factor of three. So, you know, if we measure from, you know, this is the lowest point we went, and we measure to here, and that's a hundred percent. So the lowest point we went, you know, when we pushed up was a hundred percent. And you come over here to our current, our current bear market. You know, our lowest point to where we pushed up that's a little over 300 percent so that 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 proves to me that this right here is playing out exactly like this was and if that's the case we still have all of this to come down so this is three times larger than this and it's, take, it's taking three times longer this pump was three times more than this pump and you know, if if you look when we bottomed in two thousand, you know, fourteen, you know, we were just above, just above this. Um, this is the three point six one eight. You know, we were when we bottomed, we were halfway between the two point six one eight and the three point six one eight, halfway between. So if this plays out identical, and it doesn't mean it has to be exactly the same, but even if it plays out close to it. You know the lowest point you could go that would be in the triple digits. I would hate to see it go that low. I don't. I don't see it going that low. I think a more realistic number, if we do drop, would probably be around eighteen hundred. Um, and the reason I say that is because if you look, 
you know, usually when you drop down previous, you know, even way back, guys, because all of this is connected, but but our previous, um, you know, you can find there's a lot of um, support here and resistance at 1800. So I think 1800 around there would be a likely target. And if we go lower than that, you know, you're looking at potentially, you know, 1350. You know, there's a lot of support and resistance around. You know, 1200. I, I think 1800 is a likely target if it's that bearish. But guys, I just I just do think that this is coming down. I, you know, if if I'm, I'm wrong, if we start pushing up, and guys, I've shown you this chart before. Um, let me just load this up really quick. Uh, this is a Bitcoin capitulation cycle chart. So, this is the um, even if we do push up. So let me draw this. So this is what I was talking about here, guys. I've shown some people this, but in case you haven't seen this, so if, if I do a line, you know, coming out like this, and we do a line from our support here, I know there's a lot on the screen. Let me make this different color so it stands out. I make this uh, a little thicker. I'll make it blue. And this one as well. So if, if this is our support, you can see we, we're riding up this, and then you know when, when we dropped down from 6K to 3K, we found support here, and then we came down, we found support on this again. So again, guys, if you know for me to be bullish, we have to break above you know around 11,000. You know if we're here, if we shoot straight up, you know that's close to 11,650. If it's out here, that's 11,500. Guys, for me to start getting bullish. We have to push above this line to, in this larger structure, the top of this, um, I guess, this uh, triangle. If we push above that, I get bullish, but then I know we're going to get rejected at this yellow line because, guys, this is what I was saying about how these markets are completely connected. You can see this. Let me get turn off these these moving averages here, but you can see. Well, looks like I turned them on, but you can see this center yellow line. We capitulated from it right here. We found resistance, we found support. We capitulated from the same center yellow line again. This way from 6K to 3K. You can see that we pushed up to it, found support and resistance. And then we pushed up to this next line. And then we came down and found support on the same one again. We found support right here. As soon as we broke support, we dropped down. This is the same line, guys. We capitulated from three times. And then we pushed up, we got rejected. Perfect resistance right on this line right here at you know close to 10,000. 10,300 and then we came down and we found resistance on this line and we pushed up so if we do push above this you are going to find resistance you know the, where my cursor is at right now is 12,271 so even if we push above this you can find resistance here to push you back down once we get above this I start getting um, I wouldn't say super bullish but then I get I say I get very bullish and if we put in a high higher than our previous uh, macro high back here, you know, thirteen thousand eight hundred, then I would say I would get super bullish because you know we have we have a higher high and I expect us to go higher. But I still believe that um, what's playing out is this um, Bitcoin bubble. It just there's just too much similarities between these two. I I just think that this is the way it's playing out. And again, time will tell. Um, it'll be interesting to see what happens uh, when we make contact with this ring right here. <clears throat> you know, this ring we are about 54 days away from hitting it. You know, if, if we move up, we hit it sooner. If we come down, we hit it a little sooner. But roughly, we're 54 days from hitting this ring. So that's that'll be interesting um, to watch what happens when we hit this ring. As you can see back here. You know, when we hit this ring, we had a, a pretty significant drop. And we came down a pretty good bit. We moved sideways, hit it, and had a drop. So that's what I'm saying. This is the uh, 2.618. And this is also the uh, 2.618. And again, guy, uh, guys, go back and watch that, that video. Um, again, all the links for the videos of reference will be in the description. You know, Check that out. You'll see why I believe this is how it's playing out. But again, pay attention to that one chart. Uh, let me see here. This one right here. So if we continue sideways, guys, um, look at potentially. And and again, when we hit this ring, depends on you know what price is. If if we're at current price now, we move sideways, we'll make contact with this in 20 hours. 
if we move down, you know, if we're down here, you know, then it will be, you know, 20, it'll be two days before we make contact. But I do believe as we move sideways, hit this ring, it'll keep pushing us down. Again, guys, I apologize. I didn't plan this out too well. Uh, if you do want to have access to my chart, site information is in the description. Again, it's only $20 a month right now. As soon as the new charts are up, guys, it will be 40 bucks a month. So if you're already in now at 20 bucks a month, that won't change. But if you subscribe after the new charts are live, that will be $40 a month. So again, check out that uh, CryptoTrader.tax affiliate link. Uh, it's free to sign up. But if you use my affiliate link, you do save, save 10%. And all the information about access to the charts is in the description. And until the next video, guys, trade safe.